Have you ever wondered how to talk to your creations? <laughs> Welcome to Tools to Create a Better Life with myself, Glenice Hughes. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so incredibly grateful for you. This week, we are talking about how to talk to your creations. And it's actually an invite to my upcoming membership, which is a monthly membership. So you can start whenever, end whenever. It's called Real Conversations, Real Change. And basically what I'll be doing is exactly what I'm going to share in this show is share a little bit of a tidbit of inspiration that I received that week, whatever it might be. Today happens to be about creativity and creations and communing, something, of course, I've talked about a lot over the years, if you've hung around me, and if you're new here, welcome. And the source for my inspiration, I will, of course, share it also, but if you would like the links to You Can Listen In, it is going to be in the show notes, so make sure to go check those out. If you don't know, you can grab the show notes from the last, I'm not sure when we started them. A year ago, six months ago, I'm not sure, uh, for all the radio shows on my webpage. Uh, and then also, if you're on my weekly email, you get them delivered to you every Sunday. The inspiration for today's show is from a YouTube video. It's actually a TED Talk from Elizabeth Gilbert, and it's called Your Elusive Creative Genius. And the snippet that I want to talk about today is where she talks about a poet called Ruth Stone. Ruth had shared how when she was working in the on the farm in the fields in West Virginia, she would perceive a poem coming towards her, like energetically coming towards her over the hills. And she knew in order for her to be able to write out the poem, she had to get to pen and paper meaning she had to run into the house and get the pen and the paper to write down the poem as it came over the hills to her. Now that alone to me is just freaking amazing. And I'll speak more to that, but I also want to finish the last piece. There were times where she would miss it. So she would get to the house with the pen and the paper and it would be past her on the way to another poet. Yeah. And she would also have, there was at least one time, I don't recall if there were many times or whatever, it doesn't matter, where she got there just in time where she was able to energetically grab the end of the poem and she wrote it backwards. Whoa, whoa. Now, this story has inspired me for years. I have watched that TED Talk multiple times. I have tapped into the energy of that, especially with what Ruth is talking about, where, where the creation is coming to her. And this is what I want to share with you is when we look at like how to be more creative or how, how, to, how to really tap into that, the hugest piece for me personally is to recognize that that creation is not just for me. If that, and, and I often use the, the terminology, the, the creation knocks on my door. If that creation knocks on my door, if I don't open it, it's going to find someone else's door to knock on. Like I, when I first heard that, it gave me so much space to really recognize that I'm not the creation. The creation isn't mine. The creation came to me. It knocked on my door. And then I either chose to co-create with it or I didn't, or maybe I chose to co-create with it a little bit, whatever. It doesn't matter. But recognizing that has allowed me to take the pressure off. One, like there's no pressure with that because much like for Ruth, as that poem goes by her, if she misses it, it's just going to another place. It's still going to get written. Oh my goodness. So Look at that in your own life. Look at those times where maybe you were aware in a sense that it knocked on your door. Maybe there was a business idea or something. If you do run a business, something within the business that you, you were aware of it, but you didn't choose it. Let yourself off the hook. Like, hello, <laughs> it went to somebody else. So we get to choose 
and it gets to choose. So the creation comes and knocks on the door. This is the way I see it. It knocks on the door of, of the person who it knows can co-create with it. And I'm going to use my terminology, knows it can co-create magic with it. So it comes to us, but then if it if we don't answer, it's just going to go find somebody else it can co-create magic with. So that's one piece that that has just allowed me so much more space when I'm creating because I have a lot of creations come to me. Like, I, I should probably start counting, but I would say probably 25 a day, 50 a day. I mean, there are so many things. And now, all these years later, I can totally acknowledge when they're there, when they're knocking. Um, I can even sometimes perceive like, what Ruth talks about, she could perceive it coming over the hill. I don't have it like coming over the hill. Uh, I'm not often working out in the fields. I'm never working out in the fields. Let's, let's, I'm swimming in my pool sometimes, although I haven't for months now because the winter, it's just, it's just spring now. So anyway, I digress. Uh, and so I can perceive it energetically out there. So I know something's coming. I don't know what it is, but I can perceive it letting me know it's coming. So that in in of itself and then whether I choose to answer or not is I get that that's totally up to me and I love that and then if I do answer the door I'm no longer trying to do it by myself so when that creation knocks what I used to do I mean one I didn't even know it was knocking I just saw it as you know me came coming up with a great idea and then me taking action and doing it all notice that doing it all uh, and, and it's such a different energy because it's like, okay, well, it knocked on my door. So it's aware that we can co-create magic together, which means it would like to gift also. It's gifting and receiving. And I get to gift and receive also, but I'm not doing it by myself. There is a lot of other energies, a lot of the, you know, just the creation itself and all the other energies, the universe, everything that are, are willing to, to gift and receive and receive and gift. And it's, it's all about that. It's all about receiving to me, the knock on the door, the choosing it, if it's, if it's yes. And, you know, if it feels yummy, if it's expansive, and then if it is receiving from everything that will co-create with us, so to speak, to get it out in the world. So it's such a different way to create instead of, again, maybe you never did this, but for me, it was always, okay, what, what, what do I have to figure out to do next? And then how can I do it all by myself? <laughs> Which I mean, really, I was just, I was just not receiving very much at all. I was receiving some because it was still, I was still receiving the, the creation. I just didn't acknowledge exactly what it was. I didn't, I just thought it was me thinking some great ideas, which is, I mean, that's fine too, however you want to do it. But if you would like more ease with the creation, if you would like to have way more fun, if you would like to really gift and receive the magic that's possible, allow it to have a voice, allow it to commune with you. You could say talk to you. Sometimes I will use that terminology. I'll say like talk to it, but it's more of a communion. It's more of a gifting and a receiving and I will ask it. So if I had a, a knock on my door for a new class, okay, so cool. So when? And I would look at my calendar and not look at my calendar as to when does it want to be? And that's the only thing. No, it's I'm looking at my calendar, looking at when it would work for me. And then also asking the creation, looking at the dates that work for me. Okay, so when? So we're co-creating and price and, and all of that. I mean, I play with all of those pieces and and I include it and I include me too which is a very different way to create for most of us so I wonder what magic might be possible in your everyday life I mean I'm talking about creations and a lot of times people assume that's business it's not I mean we're currently selling our beautiful acreage that's a creation too so I could do it all myself or, you know, put it onto my realtor. It's all his job. He needs to, or I could see it as this beautiful co-creation. Before we even talked to a realtor, the first thing I did was say, hey, acreage, house, whatever you want to call it. Are you done with us? I got a huge yes. It was done with us. I get 
that it so desires kids, which was really interesting because the previous acreage that we had was the same energy when it was when it was complete with us. It was like I'm like it wanted the kid energy around. So and I get that for this place, too. So I was like, cool. OK, so I co-create with it. I ask it. Yes, it's done with us. OK, so then can you bring in who you would like to own? which sounds funny, but if you look at the things that, that you own, you don't. No, you're working for them. I've been paying the mortgage here. The house was not paying the mortgage. So the house owns us. It's a totally different energy. And that's very similar with creations. They're, they're, they're a different energy than us. They have their own consciousness. So let's co-create with them as if by magic. So if we were in the, the membership call right now, this is where I would open it up for discussion, where you could ask questions, where you could give your ideas or your uh, maybe your own experiences where you created and communed and all of that. So it becomes this, again, real conversations, real change. So you would leave every membership call with a handout. On there, there's going to be whatever tools we talked about. There's also going to be a link to the inspiration so that you can listen to the full thing, uh, whatever it is. And I, in this case, it's an audio or a video, I should say. Uh, in other cases, it might be a blurb from a book. So it'll be a link to the book. Uh, there will be times where it might be just a conversation that I had with a friend or maybe with a client. So those things, obviously, I won't have links to those, you know, if it was a client uh, conversation. And I don't actually record my friendship conversation. So it would, you wouldn't get a link there. But you would get like writing of it just to have a better, um, you know, to be able to read it, basically. I would love for you to come and join us. Real conversations, real change, monthly membership. You can start anytime. You can end anytime. And if you get in before March 31st, you will get a $50 US credit to my As If By Magic Shopify store just for being one of the first ones in. So if you can't find the link above or below, just reach out and I will get that link for you. Have a great week, everybody. I look forward to chatting again next week.